I was already kind of feeling like you know, I didn't say anything like and so I was like, okay, then what you got that and we're always the opposite. So when I go to see her, her hair's short. And so they, I feel like and then the next time I go back, her hair's longer than I grow it. And it's like, you can each other. So, so, So it was like this terrible. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I think it's the same kind of search for David. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's not we can have this here, but just yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sweet. Yeah, okay. I'll get here a little early. Oh, that's sweet. All right, cool. Yep. Lunch tonight. Lunch tonight. Yeah, sweet. 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 Yeah, I have no doubt. I'm just going to pause for more. We just better. We're going to invert. Yeah. 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 I was like putting this thing together. I went through my lessons like incredible. <laughs> Look at that. Can you thought I didn't write it? Oh wait. Well, I found some very old files of mine and things I have written, and I did not remember a single thing about it. I had to read through it. Yeah, I only do it as mine because I put my name on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I yeah, right. <laughs> 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 well, no, he wasn't retired. He was 
Now, they're never really good friends. No, he's not even like that. Anyway, his wife was trying to surprise him for his birthday. <laughs> I will never, ever throw blood rain in his party. I don't want anybody to see that. Okay, so she threw his best friend down in the bedding apartment. He went to the den, his fire senses went off, and he was on his apartment and he started trying to get rid of the Right next to the house. Really. Oh. They've sand. That's why they're in the back. They've sand all over. But I think I'm yep. almost certain those can be thrown in a, a washing machine. Okay. But we'll see. Right. They're wide. Because the, the ones that no, she might not be wanting yeah. the last one, the last one, I don't know what she did. I don't know what she did. I don't know what she did. Wait, she was just looking at how do you know that? I think she was sure that same curve. He's got these. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds bad. It's just the same curve. She's so much. I that's pretty good. I don't want to scream in the couch. Look in the couch. We found it like. Oh, yeah, the boots. I don't know. That was tragic. That was tragic. We had fun in it. Sorry, I stopped sharing. I had some. Oh, you're good. It's a sh I messed it up. It's sharing oh, the. Oh, wrong, wrong screen. Well, you picked the right one, but it's sharing the wrong one. It's weird. <laughs> I only had some slides hidden. I know it's amazing, right? Patience. <laughs> Want to run around things? Sorry, so on Where's the have to have the teeth? That's the need more evidence. Okay, we'll make some more evidence. Actually, I. I don't need more. Oh, yeah. So with the uh with the Jehovah's Witness class, you know, I have to think about knocking on the door, we're gonna have this whole thing spiel. 
supposed to be a day I would do a, a, a Muslim call to prayer, and that would be the intro. <laughs> and he thought that would probably not be the wisest thing. So, thank you. That's the joke of the day. Yeah. Was that, I wonder what Stephen would do. <laughs> Uh, not <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all again for being here good morning uh we'll jump in so today we're gonna go over uh islam and uh it's a little uh i don't know the right word dense dense maybe for for trying to get through this entire world religion in one class we're gonna try our best but there's there's a set amount of material so if i go over we might go into the, the class on mormonism so just keep that in the back of your mind i, I don't want to rush i rushed last time sorry um we'll kind of cover some of that stuff we, we blew to at the very end when towards the end of the class uh, the last few lessons so before we get into it um here's our memory verse it, and i think i got the right one this time so thanks that um they'll say it with me and how shall they preach unless they are sin as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things from the same very good. All right, so our calendar, this is a little update. So again, we're on May 21st, Islam. Next week is uh, the one I'm most nervous about, just technically, is uh, the we're going to have a call with Billy, who we support in India, and he's going to kind of give a little interactive uh, presentation over Hinduism. Come kind of prepared to, to ask questions and, and kind of get, he, he speaks better English than I do, um, so it's, it isn't hard. So, I mean, if, if you ever wanted to just pick some of a subject matter expert's brain and be on the same wavelength, you know, Andy's a Christian, obviously, it, it's a great opportunity. So um, I, we're going to rehearse to make sure everything goes well with that. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, also, in the news section with the, the cult class, uh, Boston, they just had a huge, we were talking about this, even a huge uh, gathering of Satanists. Um, and so I, I took this from the uh, uh, BBC yesterday. There's kind of some screenshots. Uh, kind of fascinating. So this is like literally hundreds, if not thousands, of, of members of the Satanic Temple were gathered in Boston. So just up here at the top, see my pointer award. Up here at the the middle top paragraph, in a candlelit room set aside for Satanic ceremonies, a neon sign welcomes you to the little black chapel. Um, and then let's see the next paragraph down in the middle paragraph over there. Um, the ritual being performed here is an unbaptism in which participants symbolically reject religious rites performed when they were children. Kind of fascinating, okay? Um, and then if you go over to the uh, the last column to the right, all the way at the top, members say they don't actually believe in a literal Lucifer or hell. Instead, they say Satan is a metaphor for questioning authority and grounding your beliefs in science. The sense of community around uh, these shared values makes it a religion, they say. Um, again, this is, people believe this, like, you know, it, it's it's a growing trend. This isn't the the off the wall thing that we sometimes. May, I'm guilty of thinking. Um, what's I included the picture down at the bottom right. They they had uh, a symbolic ceremony of ripping pages out of the Bible, and that was you know shunning you know, religious doctrine things like that. What's funny is they didn't do that with the Quran, which goes this into the Muslim class. All right, can you imagine what would have happened if they did that with the Quran? It, it's not Christians. It's totally acceptable society-wise. I'm getting on my soapbox. Sorry. <laughs> to be just, you know, everything in the world thrown out. But you mess with a Muslim on this, you better believe some, there would be some bad thing happening at that that ceremony. I, I, I'm going to go out and say that. So um, what have y'all experienced this had, have, have y'all had with, with Islam? I assume at this point. <laughs> Not all possible. Yeah. <laughs> Your experience is made different. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, work with a lot of people that are Islamic in the healthcare community. Doctors, yeah. Doctors, for sure. I've had conversation with Muslims in the past. Uh, have, have met just one Muslim who converted to Christianity. I don't know any others that I personally. The know. preacher? He's, yeah. I forget his name. I, uh, I cannot remember. He's, he, he was, was at like Florida College. Safe. 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 I don't know. So, I'm looking at the baby. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, those are kind of the experience I've had. Yeah, he's in Georgia now. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar. I haven't met him. I'm familiar with him. And that, that's kind of just digress a little bit. That that's kind of the, the purpose of this lesson is not so much like us to point fingers at, at Muslims and be like, how could you be so foolish to believe this? Whatever. It's more we're going to have an increasingly so interactions in our daily lives, and so what if any conversations can we have 
and also looking somewhat at the doctrine just to see what it is that, that they believe and, and how it compares to the Bible. There was a mosque across the street from my high school, so we got to hear the call to prayer during soccer games a lot. Yeah, fascinating. So I'll just, I'll help you out, and I think this is kind of a good summarization of the way that we think about things versus the way that they think about things. So in Iraq, having conversations with people, uh, I remember a specific conversation that was, you know, technically we worship the same God, but he was like, we work, we, we worship a very different God. The difference is my God would never allow that to happen to his son. Right. Interesting. So that's the very contrasting view of, of God and, and how he operates. Well, was that one of the religious like imam or, or something along those yeah. lines? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I my experience, so that's Iraq. My experience, I worked with Muslims in, in uh, Afghanistan. So they, they're kind of like not as maybe doctrinally sound as maybe someone in the actual Middle East. They're kind of, they have a lot of pagan influences and things along those lines. They, they would deny that, but that's, if you look at this, that's, um, so that obviously I'm, I'm coming at that in selection of, of my biases. I have that in, in my background. So make sure you fact check me on a lot of this stuff too, to make sure what I'm saying is true. This one is as varied as Christianity is, as far as sex and doctrinal differences in. Sunni, Shia is major ones. There's a couple other. Yeah, but even within. Things. Even within the Sunnis and the Shias, they have their own breakdowns. Yeah, I mean, we, we'll get into some of that too with, with interpretations of the Quran, different things. This is a uh, on the far right over here. I took that picture. No, I'm now driving. I was stopped. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, I think Carrollton. Um, so that's a lot of clarity from us. We've seen so. But the, the point being, it's all around us, and it's, it's I mean, especially if you work in healthcare, it, 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 it's it's there a lot. Um, I remember in high school we had one. Uh, Bosnian refugee that he was Muslim, but that was the only thing experience I had. And then September 11th, and everyone then is starting to think about Islam, right? Um, so now I would venture to guess your kids probably have a lot more Muslim classmates than we did say 10, 15, 20 years ago. So, and interrupt me at all if you want to jump in. So basic beliefs of, of Islam, and again, it, it's very aggressive to teach this class in, in one one day. So I'm going to give you kind of a a, a very, very blanket, kind of what the actual doctrine teaches. There's a ton of stuff I didn't include, um, and a ton of stuff I did include that I'm not going to be able to get to you probably in the depth that it needs. So we want to do a somewhat decent job. Um, the very foundation, so the, the Muhammad lives about 570 AD. He was the, the last prophet in their mind. They believe in, in Judaism and Christianity, and they think that Mu uh, Muhammad was inspired by the archangel Gabriel, he was given the, these revelations over 40 years. Those revelations were then compiled into a book called the Quran in Arabic. And uh, was basically that, that was the final along that path of uh, what, what God's revelation was. Um, simple, simple overview, high level. So uh, the, the Quran as a whole. So I, I picked a couple of different, different topics kind of to our, our line of, of logical reasoning of the tag here. Um, I followed the book, this, um, so the Quran, we're going to go into that. So you know, compared to the Bible, what is it that, that the Quran actually teaches? So first and foremost, Quran means uh, it's like reading or reciting, which again, uh, Muhammad was, was basically uh, inspired by Gabriel, who told him all these in, in visions and in dreams, and then uh, Muhammad would then recite them orally, to a scribe who would then write them down. And it wasn't like you think of Paul where he's going to write an entire book. You know, it was verses and chapters and, and their chapters are called surahs. The way the Quran is organized isn't chronologically, it's by the length of chapter. So surahs is chapter. I forget how many they have. I should have found that number out. But uh, it's either These
foundation. That's what this is. And so that's originally before it was written down and compiled in a book. That, that's how it was. Sorry, guys. I'm not wrong here. Okay. I'm not sharing anymore. Do I need to share? Sure. Tell that to, to Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, to your point, they yes, sir. Absolutely. Kids, I, I work in doctor's office, and many kids from the back yeah, of the side of the Quran, and they're all cheering, like, hey, he did it. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the, the schools in the actual military school, Madras, is very much so. I mean, it's rote memorization, and, you know, nothing secular is really taught there. It's just it's just that, and that's seen. Which, I mean, you know, you, would, you, you recited a memory verse on, on this. So that... Something here is I, I, it's most likely being recited in Arabic, whether or not the kid actually understands Arabic, and that's another big posh to you or something else. And they would know and be able to say the Quran in Arabic, and they have no idea what they're saying, what they're saying, but they believe that like these are the literal words of God, and so saying this in Arabic, even though you don't know what it means, you are saying the language of God. Um, connection. connection of the words, excuse me, connection with, with God, where you're saying it, whether or not you know what you're saying at all. Um, it, it's fascinating, right? Kind of off topic, um, I had to do a case study on a patient to get my job at Children's. It's a book that was required to read. There is a historian that We'll, we'll get into that when we talk about Muhammad's that, that could have explained a lot of these things. Do they do they memorize and recite the hadith though? Because they oh, the yeah. hadith right at the same level as the Quran. So what is the hadith? It's like the it's like the explanation of the Quran. Yeah. So the Jews have the same. They have their rabbinic writings that they hold up with the Old Testament. But so to, to make sure we're not. Adding... the literal words of God. So it, the, for example, um, one Muslim commentator from like I mean, six, 700 AD said, okay, the Quran tells you to pray, but the Hadith tells you what to pray. And so the Hadith is a collection of oral or really oral traditions from Muhammad. So their, their view is Muhammad is literally the most perfect man that has ever existed. They take his, his how he lived his life and they try to replicate that. And so there's there's between a thousand and three thousand different traditions that the Muslims will then look to almost on par with the Quran as to how to actually implement their faith. So that's that's exactly it. You'll see a lot. Of, I have a quote on here from the Hadith, but that's a big thing for us because we we shun that. Like we say, Scripture solo, solo Scriptura. Like th this is the only what we believe. And that's not Islam. So I, I think it's fascinating. Um, uh, Let's see what else we got. Um, so one other fascinating piece of this, I'm going to keep using the word fascinating because I think it's amazing. So Muslims spread perfection of the Quran. Like, it is literally perfect. It's a miracle in and of itself. But uh, they look at the, the Bible and they say, well, it's been corrupted. There's different translations. There's different, you know, going all the way back, there's different variations. The Quran is but there is. So during the third caliphate, which is like 644 to 656, so this is within 20 years of Muhammad, right? There started to become variations in these military camps with different Muslims. So they would, they, because a lot of it was memorization, right? So this guy would say it out loud and this other guy would be like, that's not what it says. And then they would go back and like, oh yeah, you're right. And they would, there'd be different variations of it. And they started thinking, okay, well, this is bad. So what happened is the caliph, which is like the spiritual leader, think of him almost as far as like a pope, he says, okay, there's going to be an authorized version. Everything else is haram or it's, it's bad. It's sinful. So literally it went out and said, hey, this is the authorized version. Everything else, burn it. And so the original manuscripts, all these things, it's original or everything else burned. So they don't have original stuff. There's not a rib floating out there that I'm aware of that has original you know, Quranic verses, all these, because they're symbol, authorized, everything else, destroy it. So Muslims will point to this and be like, it's a miracle that it's been preserved. 
it was a miracle preserved. It was, hey, you use this or you die. And so it's preserved my man's sword. Um, I think that is is just fascinating because you look at Christianity and there was no centralized power like that dictating what you were going to use. So you think of King James Version. Okay, use the King James Version, destroy everything else, and now we can say, oh, it's been preserved. Well, it's ridiculous, right? Um, so anyways, also, uh, there are some verses, and this is hard to believe too, there are some verses that uh, Muhammad admits that he was possessed by Satan or the devil, and those are inside the Quran. The fact that those exist doesn't really intellectually bother or logically bother Muslims. They're just like, oh yeah, but he admitted it. And so what's the natural thing? It's like, well, if that's the case, how can the rest of it be true, you know? And one interesting part that came from the oral tradition of the Quran was something like in um, in the Quran, Surah Yusuf 31, it is talking about the story where uh, Joseph uh, is, is being courted by, oh my goodness, testing my memory here, and I have not had coffee this morning, uh, <laughs> but it's basically where his wife is, is trying to convince her friends that he, Joseph is so beautiful, how could she not? you know, sleep with him. And so the story in the Quran talks about how they cut their hands while peeling oranges because they're distracted by looking at him. That was never actually said in the Old Testament. It was linked to Jewish folklore that was talk, that was popularized and talked around campfires of elaborating a story, yeah. right? And so it's interesting how things like that made its way in because of oral traditions that were so popular at the time. So when we get to the section on, on Muhammad the man, that's exactly, I, I don't think I added that, but it's a great point because Muslims will say, okay, it was a miracle, literally a miracle that Muhammad was able to produce the Quran, that these, these were just so new ideas. And really it, it's not, I mean, Saudi Arabia in the Arabian Peninsula was a melting pot of, I mean, it was caravans, traveling, merchants, all this. So you, how many countless nights exactly like that where you're sitting on the campfire just telling stories? And Islam is kind of a melting pot of, of Christianity, Judaism, paganism, and a lot of these things. And it's, it's very easy to think about how someone can just hear a lot of these, add details, and then spit out the Quran. So that's a great point. Um, and then, but, yeah, the Hadith. Okay. Uh, oh, the doctrine of uh, abrogation. So that I didn't know that existed. And what that means is that later chapters in the Quran chronologically supersede the earlier ones. So if they, conveniently, which means that if there is a, a discrepancy and one says one thing, the other says another thing, well, you got to understand abrogation that like this is after the fact. So therefore, it, it, it's it's OK, you know, just like, you know, uh, you can marry, you can have a four four wives. Well, immediately Muhammad then gets revelation that, that that restriction doesn't apply to him. He can he can marry up to 15, specifically like one where God told him, like, no, you can marry this one. Okay, great. Abrogation, bam, we're done. And so it, it's kind of an interesting, it, it's kind of like hammering jello to a wall. You can't logically go to doctrine in the Quran and prove it because there's so many little loopholes. So again, I, I think it's pretty fascinating. Hey. Any questions so far? Yeah, I mean, because there's there are verses in the Quran that talk about treating other Abrahamic religions with respect, and then other verses that you know would call Christians and Jews uh, infidels that had to be slaughtered. So absolutely. So well, same thing as far as perfect segue into respecting um, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So that would say, okay, Muhammad. Um, said, like, legitimately said, okay, you need to follow these old scriptures, but also what I'm saying. Well, these old scriptures, if you read them, completely refute anything said, they're, they're going to come after. Um, so, you, again, try pulling that, that thought in your head and trying to make it work. Um, this is kind of an uh, interesting uh, graph I saw uh, about the preservation of the Bible. So, um, just ultimately refuting, okay, the, the Bible has just been corrupted beyond all recognition. Uh, the Bible for ancient man, uh, manuscripts is the most well-preserved piece of, of work of literature that on, on earth. Um, so there's this kind of goes all, and again, no one's going to say, oh, the Iliad, you know, that's 
that, that's that's preserved, right? There's 640 copies. Uh, complete New Testament, there's almost 6,000 complete copies dating back to the you know, second century. Um, and the percent accuracy is 99%. percent you think, oh, what about that 1%? Those are things like, I mean, it, grammar. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's not anything that would have a doctrinal significance. And this is, again, without a centralized authority you know, by the, the fear of death. Telling what you're gonna, what you're gonna use. And the, the Iliad's the next best best thing in historical documents, except there's only a handful of copies that even attribute the Iliad to Homer. That's oh, the author. Yeah. And we take that as okay, Homer wrote it. And an atheist isn't gonna refute that, right? Yeah. Or, and we're kind of veering off into atheism. But again, <laughs> we have to have a good understanding that what we have in Scripture is preserved. And so now we can we can dive into it faithfully, knowing it's like jumping into a into a, a deep lake you can't see underneath the surface but we we know that it's deep it's not going to die there's not going to be a rock right underneath it when we jump in so we we know what it is one uh, a couple of books sorry i neglected to sitting right here um on on this subject but also how the scriptures came to be highly recommend this book if y'all ever want to borrow it or, or buy it this is great for your library um the canon of scripture it's fascinating and then if you're ever seriously studying islam this is the book you need to get. It is like I would highly recommend it. It's answering Islam. Um, it it takes it from a logical perspective, considers the Muslim argument, and then refutes it. So, and but again, another, another good book on the scripture is um, How We Got the Bible by Neil Lightfoot. Oh yeah, and I have a couple of copies if anyone ever wants to borrow. Yeah. Um. Sure. Hey, so real fast, before you come on, just some of the questions in here. Um, if you had a spiritual conversation with a Muslim who said, yes, of course, the Bible and Jewish texts are from Allah, or God, uh, but they've been corrupted through the centuries. The Quran is the only book to have been preserved throughout the generations. How would you respond? What do you mean? Proof that it's been preserved. And then, okay, you can preserve a lie. But it doesn't mean that it's it's actually true, right? It's still you're just preserving a lie. So I would I would look at it. Now that's a little more pointed than a lot of Muslims would like go for it. Um and then would there be any questions that you would pose to challenge a Muslim's claim that the Quran has been perfectly preserved? How come Muhammad's life doesn't reflect the life and the teachings though? Of, of his teachings? Yes. Very much so. And we'll get into some of those too. He's not the perfect moral example. Yeah, if you follow Jesus, you come out a Christian. But if you follow Muhammad, you do not come out a faithful Muslim. That's a great point. So, and you might have to clarify this for me, but I, I believe that the Quran does attest to the Old Testament, New Testament being of God, at least it's from Allah or the Lord uh, at certain points. And so I guess just naturally I would ask, well, how is it that I can read a passage like Galatians 1 and talking about even if you a different revelation from an angel that that should not be given any, any credence you know Absolutely. Exactly that it should be encouraged so to me that is that's something that that muhammad never addresses and actually he falls directly in that category so that that antithesis just doesn't make sense to me how yeah. I, tell me how i can reconcile that right and just ask that just ask things like that that put them on the on the kind of the spot i don't know how right. would you reconcile that it, it's not enough to just say, well, Muhammad is a bottom prophet. It's not enough. Right. It says who, right. And anyway, the, the Galatians 1 is a perfect example of that. I mean, it speaks specifically to this. If it ever happened, yeah. it's a lie. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that's exactly right. That, that I put that in here too, just again, for the preservation of scripture. Yes, sir. I was just going to say, from a, just from a strictly literary standpoint, like take out doctrine and just from looking at it as a work of art, so to speak, it's, not even remotely comparable the literary quality of the bible versus the literary quality of the Quran. Right. just like readability right the, the Story. beauty of the language the clarity of the language the consistency of the language like all of that is not uh, even right it's, yeah it's just not even that anywhere close and, and to understand it takes a lot of background research but that's absolutely true that's that's i mean it's Absolutely. Um, people, people get stuck in the very difficult parts to understand of the Bible and kind of miss the beauty of the bulk of it, which is quite easy to understand. Forget that. And again, to me, going back to, hey, you know, 
within 20 years of, of the creation of this, all there was a concerted effort from a centralized authority to destroy all of differing texts. It's not that differing texts didn't exist. They were just intentionally sought out and, and fanatically destroyed. So that removes this argument for me as it being from God, I guess, or from a, a miracle standpoint. Um, so free will, this is the part about Islam I didn't know until I, I studied it. Uh, I, I didn't know this. And so you think Calvinism, you think, you know, uh, God has picked those who are going to be faithful to him and who are not. Islam is very much the same way. Now, if you talk to a, you know, westernized uh, Muslim, or, you know, again, we, we talked about there's, there's a bandwidth of what is, we're talking about fundamentalists. If you read the Quran and go based on that, this is what you come out with. And so if they disagree with this, go to their own source. And they're not in line.